Welcome to A Quarter in Time. If you've been here before, welcome back. If this is your first time here, welcome. Today I am going to be making three different crock pot meals. This is my lunch break from my day job and so my goal behind this is to fill my freezer with meals that I didn't actually have to put much effort into actually cooking that we'll be able to pick from as we need when we don't feel like making dinner or don't have a lunch ready. These are all going to be really convenient things to have in my freezer. This is part one of my three crock pot meals at once. Part two will be breakfast items, but these are more intended for lunches or dinners. I'm going to be making a beef bourguignon. I'm going to be making a salsa chicken, and I'm going to be making a potato and Italian sausage soup called Zuppa Toscana, if you've had that before. The first thing that I'm going to do is get my beef bourguignon going because that one is going to take the longest. I'm going to be cooking that one in a pressure cooker. This is not an Instapot, but I think that the Instapot has really similar features to this. This has a sear and saute button, so I'm going to try and brown my beef in this pot just to reduce the amount of dishes that I have. I don't know for sure that that's going to work, so I might end up taking the meat out and cooking it on the stove, but I'm gonna be focusing on the beef broiling on first and then prepping whatever ingredients will go into multiple of my crock pots here. Um, these are all different sizes, but I think this is gonna be a really fun day. I'd put a lot of food in my freezer. Let's go ahead and get started. Normally I would be doing all of my prep for cooking over where I have my crock pots and I'd be doing all my baking at the stove but since my crock pots are out of the way on the counter and because I have a very small kitchen all of my prep to get all of this ready is going to happen right on the stove here and I don't currently have any cooked bacon so I am going to be cooking some. I'm going to use the bacon and the beef bourguignon recipe and the Zuppa Toscana recipe. And to cook it, or bake it, prepare it, I am just going to put it in the oven. I really like cooking bacon like this. And because I don't have any currently prepped, I will be cooking all of the bacon in this package. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cook another pound since I'm already here in the kitchen on my little lunch break. And then the next time I need bacon, it will be ready. I'm gonna put this in the oven and set a timer for about 15 minutes. And then I'll put another batch in. I'm gonna have these recipes listed below if you're interested in making them. And this is kind of fun because all three recipes are gonna be very different and have different meats. So I have my stew meat out here and I need to cut this into chunks. I have some chicken in the microwave thawing, defrosting if you can hear that in the background. And I'm actually gonna be using chicken drumsticks for this because I had them in the freezer and I didn't really have another use for them. And I haven't actually opened this yet, but it looks like my beef is already cut into pieces, which is super nice. So, it kind of changes that since I don't actually need to prep this, which is great. To have a few things going at once while my chicken is thawing, I'm going to go ahead and grab my hot Italian sausage and get this browned up for the zuppa because once this is brown um, I can just let it sit. It won't go in the crock pot right away anyway. So since I am a little short on time I wanted to get this going while I start browning the beef. I have the pressure cooker here and I'm going to hit the sear and saute and start. 
And I'm just gonna add a little avocado oil. One thing I'm really excited about in today's cooking is I'm gonna be using a lot of things that I have preserved throughout the year. So I'm gonna be using some of these garlic pucks. I'm gonna be using some of the onions that I chopped up. I am also gonna be using salsa and probably turkey broth instead of chicken stock that I've also been able to preserve myself. So I love being able to use the things that I preserved. I do have videos out there. I'll put little cards above what I'm using, what I'm using if you're interested in checking that out. <clears throat> I'm just waiting for my oil to heat up here and then I'm going to add in the beef. Okay, I think this is ready. Oh yeah. We're going to get these added, added in. And I'm going to be seasoning this with salt and pepper. And <clears throat> while I'm browning this meat, I am going to go through and make sure that I have all of my meat in a single layer so that it all browns nicely. You want it to be like that in a single layer and you'll notice that it starts to cook up and brown really nice. So I'll come back through here and flip every piece and get some really nice color. I'll be cooking this for three to four minutes. Um, that's the bacon timer. I'll be cooking this for three to four minutes on each side. One nice thing about this Instapot or pressure cooker, this is an Insignia brand, is that it has a timer right up here. So I don't even have to pay attention to how long this has been going because that does it for me. I'm just going through now and flipping over each piece. While I'm waiting for my meat to finish browning, I'm going to get um, my beef broth measured out here. I only need one cup and this is four cups. So I'm going to put the leftovers <clears throat> into these soup trays and then this will go right into the freezer because I'm going to need them again for my Zupa. But that way I just am not wasting it and I'll be able to use it in future cooking. I'll put a link to these little trays down below. I used to have some that had four, but I really like having just two instead. I decided for the rest of this that I'm not going to be using. I'm going to put it in ice cube trays. So that way when I need broth, if I don't need an entire cup, I have options. I'm going to take out this absolutely delicious smelling and looking brown beef. The pieces got super browned. I'm just going to put them off to the side because I need to add in some red wine to this and have that reduce. So it'll still go on to the um, sear and saute setting. And then I will be able to put it on the crock pot setting. If you are just using a regular crock pot for this recipe, you would just cook or brown the beef on the stove and also add the wine on the stove. But I decided to give this a whirl because I have that function and I wanted to see if I could use one less pot and I think I'm going to really like the results from this. I'm measuring out a half a cup of some red wine. I keep a bottle of red wine in the fridge to cook with and I do like this wine. I just didn't drink it fast enough before it was going to go bad. So I'm going to turn this back onto the sear and saute and start. And I'm going to add this in here until it reduces. My wine is definitely cooking down. And between the browned beef here and the wine, this, my house smells so good and so folly. Yum. I'm going to start to get out some of my 
other veggies. My plan with this is to get the beef in here with the liquids that I need so that the beef can be cooking and then I'll add in the carrots and the potatoes that I'm going to add into this once I peel those things. But this is looking pretty good. I'm going to turn this on a slow cook instead. And we'll do it for four hours. That's fine. I'm going to add in my beef broth and the browned meat here. And then I'm just gonna put the lid on this, kind of forget about it for a little bit. I know that I'm gonna be able to add in the onions, the potatoes, and the carrots within the next 20 minutes after I make some progress on the other dishes, and nothing is gonna, it's not gonna change anything. So rather than taking the time to do that now, I'm just gonna put this off to the side and get my next dish going. One more thing I wanna add to this right away is a single tomato. I don't have any tomato sauce, so my plan with this so put this in here, peel it, it's frozen still, but I'll be able to peel the skin off from the heat and then I'll pick it out and core it. But I'm gonna let that tomato cook in there and I think that will work out just fine. I'm back over and getting my brown sausage brown. This has just been kind of cooking on low while I got the beef stew worked on. This is the uh, spicy Italian sausage or hot, but you could use mild if you don't like things hot. I love hot things, so that is why I have this one. This is almost done. Once it's cooked through, I'm going to set it off to the side and then start to assemble my salsa chicken. And then I'll circle back around to the veggies for the zuppa and for my beef stew. This is smelling so good. But for the next crock pot meal that I want to make, I'm going to use this bigger one for the next one. Let me get this plugged in. I'm gonna cook this next one on high, but I might drop that down to low, depending on how everything is cooking. But I am just gonna combine everything into this one crock pot. It might be kind of weird, but I am using chicken drumsticks. I got a great deal on a bunch of chicken drumsticks a while ago, and I just haven't been able to use them. Actually, I'm gonna wait on putting my chicken in here it's going to be hard to stir everything. So I'm going to get everything assembled in here, stir it all, and then I'm going to add my chicken. But my plan will be to shred the chicken off those drumsticks uh, during for my final product. To this crock pot, I'm adding a cup of quinoa. I'm going to be using one can of black beans. When I get this opened, I'm going to drain and rinse them, and then I'll be adding them into the crock pot. Adding in a pint of corn. I just opened up a jar of my homemade salsa with my Tatler reusable lids. I love those lids. I'll put a link to them down below. This is the zesty recipe from the ball book. It's very mild, but I actually have been eating it and crushing up some dehydrated peppers. Those are homegrown dehydrated peppers and it has made a world of a difference. I love it. I would definitely make it again and I would just plan to add those later, but I'm putting in a whole pint of my homemade salsa, which is very exciting and that smells good already. I decided I wasn't going to be using 
my homemade turkey broth. I'm just gonna use this boxed chicken broth instead. And I'm just adding in one pint of that. I'm gonna save the rest of this for my Zupa Toscana. I'm throwing in about a tablespoon of some taco seasoning. I make my own taco seasoning. I haven't made a video yet. If you're interested in seeing how I make this, put a comment down below and I'll make sure when I run out of this to make a video. I also make my own Italian seasoning for spaghetti. The last thing I'm going to add to this before the chicken are two of my little ice cube trays of green chilies. I made a video. I'll put a little card above and yeah, I'm going to use two of those. They're frozen. These have been working out great in cooking and different applications like this. So while it didn't work for me to pressure can them, I'm, I'm happy to do this regardless. I'm going to give all of this a quick stir and then I'm going to add the chicken to it. I could go ahead and add cheese to this now, but I think I'm going to wait a little bit until this starts cooking a little bit. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to add cheese now or if I want to add cheese when I actually go to enjoy this. But I'm just going to add the chicken into this, put the cover on, and this one's ready to go. I'm gonna get this chicken nice and submerged. And I'm going to move this crock pot to a different part of my kitchen so it's out of the way and I can get my last one going. Before I get started on the last one, I'm going to check on this tomato. Oh yeah, this is going to work out really well. So I'm taking out the tomato. And I'm just going to set it in here and pick off the skins. I'm gonna put the skins in this jar. A little hot, that's all right. It's actually gonna work out because I'm not gonna be putting back in a whole bunch of liquid because it's supposed to be tomato sauce. So a lot of liquid would have cooked out anyway. So now I am just going to pick this apart. And throw in just the pulp of the tomato. So I think that's gonna work out really well. Give this all a nice it smells so good. I'm gonna put the lid back on and start to get the veggies prepped that are gonna go in here and in the last crock pot meal. And then I need to go back to work. I got some potatoes rinsed off and I've been just trying to work through what I have. These are not homegrown, unfortunately. I don't really have a big enough garden, I don't think to dedicate space to potatoes. But if I ever had more land or lived in the country, I would try to grow my potatoes for the year. I just don't know that that's gonna happen where I live currently and that's okay. We just can't do it all ourselves. And I think I would rather have an abundance of peppers and tomatoes and things like that as opposed to potatoes. So these potatoes are going to go into my Zupa and then I'm going to put a different kind of potato into the beef bourguignon. Beef stew. It's kind of a hybrid between a bourguignon and a stew. I just really wanted to use up some of that red wine that I had in the fridge.
You don't have to peel your potatoes for this recipe if you don't want to, but I prefer to. I got my potatoes peeled, so now I'm just going to cut them. And then I'll be adding them into the, whoops, crock pot. Because the potatoes are going to cook the longest, once I have this cut, I'm going to go ahead and add in my turkey or chicken stock. I'm adding in the rest of this carton, which is two cups. I grabbed out red potatoes for the beef bourguignon stew, and I'm just going to cut them in half, throw them in the pot. And then I will be done with potatoes for my crock pot day. Oh, it smells so good. All right, I'm gonna get rid of this and then just rinse this off and I will peel the carrots for my stew. I didn't grow these carrots, but my friend did. So they're still local, which is super exciting. And I just can't believe how much of my food today I was able to grow myself or source locally. And it's just really rewarding when that's the case. I'm just going through and peeling these carrots because They've got a little bit of <clears throat> garden dirt, if you will. And then I'm gonna come back through and cut them into fairly large pieces because that's how I want to, you know, I want a bite of carrot. I don't want a piece of carrot with something else when I'm eating this stew. I'm just gonna go rinse these off real quick to make sure I got all the peels off of them. And then I'll come back through and give them a rough chop. Every time I open the crock pot with the beef bourguignon, I just smell the wine and it smells so good. I've got some pre-chopped onions and I have them in some silicone bags. I can put a link to these silicone bags down below. But I'm just going to take oops, oops, uh, about a cup's worth and throw it into my beef or union dish. And I'm going to use the rest of my onions in my soup. Be able to rinse this out and use it again later. Obviously I have a lot of dishes going on here but part of the reason I'm able to get so much done is because of all of the prep work that's been done like the onions for example having those sliced in the freezer to where I can just add them it's a really good convenience to have. I'm just crumbling some bacon and putting it in my zuppa and then I'm going to crumble some bacon and put it in my stew dish. This is probably going to go in the fridge because I'm sure we'll eat it before then, but otherwise I'd put this in the freezer and have cooked bacon in the freezer, which would also be really convenient. It's time to go ahead and add in my garlic pucks. You get a garlic. Oh. Well done. This is gonna go into the beef stew. 
I'm going to take a few seconds, get everything cleaned up, and then I'm going to come back and stir everything and just double check that I didn't forget anything. I feel like I'm forgetting some stuff for the Zupa. I am going to have to come back to that at the end of my work day and add in the kale, which is preserved by me, and then also heavy whipping cream and the Italian sausage. But I think otherwise, everything else is done. It's going to go in the compost. For my Zupa, I'm just going to throw in a little bit of salt and pepper, but I'm definitely going to be adjusting to taste after I, after this cooks a little bit and I taste it and I add the rest of the ingredients. But in here we have garlic pucks I made, onions that I have preserved, and we'll be adding kale to this that I also preserved. This is going to sit on low and I will be back to check on this after I am done with work. Checking on the... Oh, I am not kidding. This smells so good. I'm just going to give everything a nice stir and let this continue to cook down. Just have one more to go check. The chick. Oh my goodness. Oh, I can't believe I made the salsa. This smells so good. Oh, I'm so excited for this. This, I think, will freeze really nice. It's a really good way to have a different type of grain with the quinoa. Oh, smells so good. So good. And my peppers in my little ice cubes have broken up really nicely as well. You can see a ton of them in this little handful here, which is super exciting. That's great. And we'll be back to check on that after lunch or after work today. I'm done with work. I came home. I took a shower and I have a little bit of work I need to do with <clears throat> my salsa chicken dish and then a little bit with my Zupa. The beef stew dish is almost done, but not quite yet. So I almost have all three of my meals ready to go. I am just going to take out the chicken drumsticks and give them just a minute to cool so I could touch them. And then I'm gonna take the meat off the bones and throw the meat back into this While this is cooling, I'm going to go over to the Zupa. My Zupa is definitely ready to be finished up here. It smells really good. It's looking really good. So I'm going to add the Italian sausage. This is cold now. I just put this right into the fridge just like this. So I'm adding in that pound. I'm adding in some kale that I had in the freezer that I had blanched. This is homegrown kale. It's got a little bit of ice crystals on it, but that's okay with me. And I'm going to start with this much and I'll add more if I feel like it needs more, but I don't want to overdo it either. So this seems like the right amount to start with. I'm going to mix this all together and let this sit, warm up, and then I'll come back through and add in the cream. And I'll give it some taste tests, probably add garlic salt because I usually do salt and pepper, and then this will be done. So for each of these drumsticks, I am peeling off the skin. I cooked them with the skin on intentionally so that they didn't dry out. And then I'm just coming through with a fork and removing the meat from the bones. If I were to do this again, I'd probably just use breasts or thighs or something, but I got a really good deal on this, which is why I am using this meat. I'm just gonna throw the chicken back into the crock pot.
I'll probably hang on to these bones and get the rest of the meat off of them and kind of the fat and turn it into stock. Probably won't pressure can it because it's not going to be enough, but it should make, you know, a quart or so of broth and that's enough to justify that for me. I will probably make a video when that comes out, so if you want to make sure to see it, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it. Chicken's just a little hot sometimes, but I'm trying to just be done so I can move on with the rest of my afternoon since I'm all done with work. I have my chicken back in this pot and I am just going to mix this all together and let this cook for just a little bit longer. I'm going to get cheese ready, put cheese on top, not stir it in, hopefully get a nice coating of melted cheese and then this will be done. I don't have any cheese shredded so I am just going to shred this entire eight ounce block. This is Colby, oh I thought it was Colby Jack, it's not, Cat Colby Jack. I'm shredding this eight ounce block of Cheddar Jack cheese. I just shredded that whole block minus these little pieces here that I just am going to get too close with the grater on. So these are just going to go right into the crock pot. And then I'm going to sprinkle a bit of cheese on the meal here. And I'm probably just going to use this whole block because who doesn't like cheese? And then I'm going to let this cook up until the cheese is all melted. The cheese has melted and I turned the heat off. So I'm just going to let this cool and then I'll be able to package it up. I'm just going to add some heavy cream to the soup. And I'll stir it around here. And then I need to do a little bit of taste testing and add my seasonings to my zupa. To end this today, I am packaging these into individual containers, a mixture of glass and plastic. So I have some here, those are individual serving sizes. And then I have a two person serving and another two person serving. This is the beef stew. We'll be eating this the rest of the week and freezing whatever's left. And then I still need to package up the Zupa. That looks awesome. But this is what I'm gonna be eating for dinner tonight. So I will package it up once I'm done with that. If you like this video and wanna see more, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.